I'm Colt Stevens from C. Stevens Gunworks. The following video you're going to see is an archive of my earlier work. Some of these earlier videos of mine have some great information that I really wanted to repost and preserve. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the content and I hope you learned something from this video. Today we're going to be talking about 300 blackout conver caliber conversions in an AR-15. So today we have a 300 blackout AR pistol right here. That is a factory 300 blackout. Um, but we're going to discuss how you can turn any AR that you have that's 556 into a 300 blackout. And we'll also talk about why you would want a 300 blackout. Why would you go with that over a standard 556? And it has several advantages that the 556 performs poorly with that would give you a reason to go to 300 blackout or vice versa, depending on the role that you have for your rifle or pistol. So, 300 blackout. It's originally it was 300 whisper that was a proprietary round. 300 blackout is a round that was submitted to um, SAAMI, um, SAMI, for a standardized loading across the board so it could become more of a commercial loaded um, round rather than a wildcat that the, um, the specifications were not very rigid. So. Um, once you saw a lot of commercial adoption with that, um, you started seeing people doing AR conversions for this in this the commercial world, and it's really taken off. There's there's a lot of a lot of traction that it's gained in the market, and it's a uh, it's quite an interesting round. There's a lot of different um, cartridges that are being loaded for it now, and it's really picking up steam. So how would you convert an AR? Really, you only need one part. You need the barrel. The neat thing about this, and they, they made, built this into the design of it, is the actual cartridges themselves, which we have here, these are subsonic rounds, we'll talk about that in a minute. These are the same case as a standard 5.56 NATO. The only difference is they are necked up from 224 projectiles to 30 cal, um, thus 300 black cal. The barrel is the only thing you must change. It is a required change. You can't you can't just shoot two two threes out of this. And we'll talk about why that's important later. Optionally, depending on which barrel you get, you may need a gas system adjustment. Um, we'll get into that right now. The gas system. These barrels are offered in five inch to sixteen inch. So these barrels typically have a pistol link gas system, um, as opposed to this, this one has a pistol link gas system. If you had a standard 16 inch carbine 5.56, it would have carbine link gas, which is longer than pistol link gas. Um, the reason that's important is because 300 blackout has less um, internal pressure to cycle the, the bolt back. If you have carbine on a 300 blackout, it's notoriously difficult to get running without a softer buffer tube. And I've encountered this myself when I, I uh, had a 300 blackout upper that we swapped out on a, uh, a different build. This um, pistol has pistol link gas, of course, but I built a 16 inch carbine um, 300 blackout that did not cycle right out of the box and I ended up having to get a light buffer to make it work so occasionally you'll have to do minor adjustments that's why most of the time you see pistol link gas because you have more pressure that's um, working the action the uh, the bolt carrier back for you um, now of course that does kick harder um, the 300 blackout carbine is right on the edge of short stroking that's why it's 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 not totally unreliable. Um, it's not totally reliable either. You just have to kind of get that fine line of where it works best. And there's a couple other things you can do like adjustable gas blocks to get it just straight fine tuned in there. Um, but for most purposes, um, five to 16 inch barrel, pistol link gas is gonna be best. Um, commercially, after about eight inch barrels, they start to offer carbine. But keep in mind, if you're running carbine on your 300 blackout, you're gonna have to do some adjustment to get it working just perfectly. And it may not run straight out of the box if you're slapping an upper and a lower together. So we talked about the 
the parent case, the 223 necked up to 30. The dimensions for this cartridge are 7.62 by 35. Um, their goal with this was to mimic the performance of the 762 by 39 the AK round, in an AR-15 size package. Now, importantly, you can get the AK-762 by 39 in an AR, but it requires different magazines to use. Um, if you ever looked at like Palmetto State Armory, they have a specific lower that's designed to accommodate the AK magazines. This uses a straight AR-5 six magazine, the AR-15 5.56, um, 30 rounders. Just same follower because it's the same case. Um, the 762 by 39 AK is a different magazine entirely because it's a different case. This is interchangeable with the 300 blackout. And the second goal is of course the minimal, minimal modification of existing rifles. You only have to have one part that's the barrel. You may have to have other things depending on what exact barrel you have, which is more important with commercial because military, they're probably gonna all use one kind of barrel. So they're gonna know exactly what they have to have to convert it. But as far as required conversions, the barrel only is what you need. So why would you use 300 Blackout? Um, subsonic velocity and wide grain variance. So like I said on this one, these are subsonic 300 Blackout, these are G2 Research Trident rounds, which are very high-end um, performance cartridges. These are 200 grain, and these are going to be, I'll have to check the exact velocity on these, um, but the numbers we've already had, we have here, 110 grain is 2375 feet per second, and 220 grain is 1025 feet per second. So this would probably come in at it right at 1100 feet per second, which is very good. That's right at the supersonic barrier. And of course, this may be a little different since we have an eight inch barrel here. Um, I'm not sure what they're exactly um, tested at the factory with, whether that's a 16 or a 10 and a half or anything like that. I would assume 16 inch. So you're gonna have a little bit less than box. The cool thing is with this round is you can go from supersonic, the 110 grain, to the 220 grain subsonic. That is something you don't really see in 5.56. Um, there's really only one load for the 5.56 commercially available. Um, that's the atomic 115 grain um, 5.56. That is subsonic. And part of why the 5.56 is so successful is because it's super high velocity. It's kind of like 5.7 by 28. 300 blackout, you have a wider diameter, you can fit more projectile mass on the end of that cartridge. So you have a lot of variance there. Um, anywhere from, I think the, the smallest I saw was like a Lehigh Defense 95 grain, all the way up to 220 and maybe a little over that. Um, you have quite a range of different projectiles you can use in this platform. And so that makes it very versatile. And a lot of things that people do with the subsonic is it's very optimal for a suppressor, especially in a compact package like this. Easily threadable, um, just throw your suppressor on, use your subsonic rounds, and you have a very, very quiet rifle or pistol. Um, it's, it's very cool, and it's, that's why it's gaining so much traction, is it's a very nifty package you got going there. And you even see that kind of catch on the like special forces use and things like that. Um, they prefer how quiet it is with a suppressor setup. So the disadvantage of this is also one of its strengths is because it uses the same magazines, it's very easily confused with the 223 and the 300 blackout in the same magazine. So like this one here, we got this here. This is just a straight 5.56, five, 30 round magazine AR platform. Same follower. There's nothing modified. This is straight off the shelf. You can fit 556 five, or the 300 blackout in the same magazine. And if you chamber one, um, they're very hard to distinguish unless you just read the read the case stamp or the uh, you happen to notice the difference in diameter. Um, it's not a good thing to chamber the wrong round in your rifle. Um, you can probably shoot a 223 through a 300 blackout barrel acceptably. It's not going to be accurate at all. 
Um, it may bowling ball around in your barrel. You don't want that. That could damage your rifling at the very least. Shooting a 300 blackout through a 223 barrel would be very bad. That's a pretty much guaranteed explosion. It cannot go through the barrel. Um, it's just too big and it will get stuck and it has nowhere to go but out. So that would blow up your rifle almost assuredly. So definitely be careful. I see a lot of people that will put like a band around their magazine that says 300 blackout. That's a good option. Some of them are specifically stamped 300 blackout. Um, this one actually has a follower that says 556. Um, but because they are interchangeable, it doesn't really matter what it says. You can put either in, but if you have a 556 and a 300 blackout rifle, it's best to keep them labeled and separate. You do not want to get that confused, especially at the range when you got a lot going on. So with that, that's all I have for you today. Uh, please check the link in the description and please like and subscribe.